is up, weather enthusiasts. I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have subtropical storm Dawn going on right here. Hurricane Calvin is rapidly weakening as this is approaching Hawaii. It's, from the looks of it, it looks like it's either going to hit as a tropical storm, a weak tropical storm, or a tropical depression. So other than a little bit of wind and rain, I'm not too concerned about the big island in Hawaii that's going to get this as there's a lot of cooler waters. There's some shear that's going on over there by the big islands that I'm not too concerned that this is going to cause any major impacts. Subtropical Storm Dawn over here, it is continuing to weaken as time continues to go on. It now has winds of 40 miles per hour. It was 45 at the last update. Um, the pressure's up to 1,007 millibars. Maximum winds extend out 115 miles from the center. It's moving north at 7 miles per hour. It is expected to start making that turn to the east starting today, and then it's expected to weaken down to a tropical depression strength, and then potentially re-strengthen the storm strength in the next five days, but we'll have to wait and see when it comes to that right then and there. So that's the situation we have going on right there. We also have a tropical wave going on in the in the mid development region. However, there is expected to be another tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa in the next couple of days that I am keeping an eye to on because there are a lot of models, the European and the GFS, especially the ensemble runs, that are starting to show some potential development with this. And some of these ensemble runs show some, this getting pr really strong. But before we get into that, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of the conditions around that area. Global sea temperatures, once again, absolutely piping hot, especially across the Gulf, parts of the Caribbean, and even through the main development region, we're getting uh, temperatures over 28 degrees Celsius right here. We can show you that right here and there as soon as this thing loads up in just a second, but nevertheless, you can see this right here. As you can see, MDR 28, 20, uh, 29 degrees Celsius across the area right there. It's absolutely uh, they are it's absolutely there going with that going on the OHC as of right now we're looking at this we're looking at a huge area in the MDR of over 50 plus this is quite unheard of in the in the middle of July this is where we were at in 2020 and that was a hyperactive hurricane season and even then that didn't extend out as much as it does now we're now seeing an area of 125 plus starting to pop up right here. So definitely something we need to continue to monitor and keep an eye on all across this area right there. So that's quite the situation we have right here. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear component to this. The wind shear component, as you can see, um, it's not too bad, especially across the MDR. It's really good. All right. So here's the Eastern Atlantic, as I've said before, across the MDR very good wind shear 10 15, 15 knots for development right there that tropical wave right there that's currently over africa is the one i'm paying attention to for future reference right there then if we go ahead and go to the western atlantic over here as you can see the caribbean has a very stubborn area of high wind shear continuing to happen over there you see 60 plus knots all over parts of the caribbean 50 plus knots over there, just absolutely volatile for development. The Gulf of Mexico and parts of the Atlantic are kind of fluctuating for uh, for shear, but this has been very stubborn for the last couple of months, and that's going to continue to be so until probably early August or so. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear forecast that we have pulled up right here according to the latest from the Euro. Here's what we got. This thing remains pretty stubborn throughout it. However, the shear continues to fluctuate in the Gulf. It, the shear does actually start to increase a bit in the main development region, especially to the uh, southern part of it in the next three days or so. And then across parts of it, it starts to weaken and calm down once again as time continues to go on. The European is also showing development, according to this model, the official European model is showing some a low pressure system in the MDR that's going to try to develop. There is a bunch of shear that is going to be around it. I'm going to check the moist air component to this as well. Yeah, there is, uh, it's in a pocket of moist air, but there is dry air surrounding it. So as long as that pressure system stays in that moist air pocket and continues to build off of it, then it shouldn't have very many issues, but there is a huge dry air issue that is going on. And that's going to persist at least for the next 10 days or so. So definitely something to pay attention to as time continues to go on. So that's what we got. We're going to go ahead and go back to the shear components to this just to give you an idea of what's going on. The shear, interestingly, in the Caribbean does weaken a bit 
about five days out right here. It weakens to around 30 to 40 knots or so. So that's something to, to keep an eye on. However, it's still not gonna be great for development. I wouldn't be great for development until it gets down to like 20, 25 knots max. So yeah, the, the shear in the Caribbean clears out completely for now, and it continues to uh, keep remain cleared out at least for the next few days. And then more shear starts entering. The shear in the Caribbean starts building back up right there. So definitely something to pay attention to as it is July. Shear is going to fluctuate. The moisture component to this right here, you're going to see more and more Sahara dust come out, and you're going to see the moisture, uh, moisture get better and better as time continues to go on. Especially in this part of the Atlantic, it is starting to, it is still fluctuating, but it is starting to clear out a bit more. This is not going to be clearing out until probably early August due to the Sahara dust that's going on in the area. So that's something we need to keep in mind because that's probably the one thing that's limiting really tropical development, at least for the next week or so. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Once again, over here with the Sahara dust, it's going all the way to the Caribbean. As soon as you take that away, it's pretty much open season for these things, especially with how warm the water is and how weak the wind shear will be in the MDR. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some ensemble runs. This is what we got from the European. And the European, about three days out, starts showing some potential development going on over here in the MDR right here. About five days out, you start seeing a lot of scenarios popping out. About three to four days out, you even, like this is 78 hours out from the Zero Z run. You start seeing a bunch of ensembles from a tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa. About five days out, you start seeing more and more of these scenarios starting to get up to tropical storm and potentially hurricane strength as it's approaching the Lesser Antilles. The European has us either approaching just north to or missing the Antilles entirely right here, although it does have a couple of runs hitting the Leeward Islands right here, so that's something to pay attention to. And all these scenarios right here have implications for potential, potential U.S. impact for all these. One of them has it hitting Florida. A couple of them do, actually. Some of them have it hitting the Bahamas, some of it having hitting uh, close to North Carolina, and this one has it staying out to sea, but it's still going to cause major, major uh, surf impacts right there in a lot of these areas. This, that, that scenario is about 15 days out, so everyone needs to keep that in mind, but something to pay attention to nevertheless, as some of these scenarios are about 10 days out as they approach Florida. Now we're gonna go ahead and show you the GFS zero Z run for comparison. And the GFS is also showing these same scenarios going on, although it is does start rapidly intensifying, but much earlier than the European does. Although they do agree on the general premise of a potential hurricane scenarios going on, impacting the Leeward Islands, potentially the Greater Antilles right here, some impacting the Bahamas. One of them stays, most of them do stay out to sea though. Although this, Couple of very couple of areas right here has it moving parallel to the U.S. coast, and one of them actually has it making landfall in North Carolina. But that's something to uh, to keep an eye on right there. The GPS, once again, we'll go ahead and pull that up right here for you guys. And let's go ahead and take uh, take a look at this similar situation with the European and the GFS as well, because the GPS is starting to show some more and more and more scenarios of at least tropical storm strength stuff happening in the Antilles right there, but it hasn't quite matched up to the European and the GFS so far. So we'll keep an eye on it for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We're going to go ahead and close it out right here. My birthday is going to be tomorrow, so if you guys could leave a like and subscribe to the channel, that would be the best birthday gift I could get from you guys. You guys did really well yesterday. I'm really thankful for you guys. Thanks for 2,700 subs. Well, with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.